What is up guys, my name is Lex. We are back here at Seminole Hard Rock. We are doubling the stakes, playing 1025 today. Hopefully the game is good and we run good. I'll meet you guys at the table, let's go. Welcome back to the vlog guys. If you are new here, I make poker videos just like this every single week, showing the ups and downs of what it's like to be a professional poker player. Today we are playing 1025 for just the second time of our poker career, buying in for $6,000. The game looks pretty good today. Pots are getting pretty big, the action is up, chips are flying, so let's get into the first hand here. Middle position opens to $75. We have 5-6 of clubs next to act. We make the call. We could be 3-betting this hand and probably should be 3-betting this hand most of the time. However, he started out with around $3,000 and he is a pretty aggressive player. So if I 3-bet, he might 4-bet me with a wider range. So I decided to just call here in position and try to see a flop. Heads up here to our first flop of queen 3-6, two clubs flopping a pair and a flush draw. Our opponent continues for 75. We make the call. We could potentially semi-bluff raise this flop, trying to get our opponent off jacks, tens, or nines. However, we just make the call, seeing the four of clubs on the turn. Now we have a flush, and our opponent checks to us. The middle position player is a very aggressive player. I have to figure out now, how can I get the most value out of this guy? If he had a hand like ace king with the ace of clubs or king jack with the king of clubs, I think he would continue to barrel on this club turn. So the fact that he checks it over to me, I don't think he really has anything at all. So I have to decide here, if I bet, will he ever call me? If I check and put in the trap, maybe he'll bluff on the river or he could even catch up with a hand like ace king hitting an ace or a king on the river and paying me off. So I decide to play a little tricky here. I check back the turn under repping my hand hoping my opponent will either bluff the river or potentially catch up with a one pair hand the river is the ten of spades and unfortunately my opponent checks i put out a bet of 300 dollars trying to get paid off by anything and nope he ends up folding but we end up taking down our first pot here at 1025 making a flush Moving on here, we have ace 10 of spades raising it up to 75 under the gun. A middle position type player raises us to 225. We have about $5,000 effective with this player, so we put in the call here with our suited ace 10. Pretty standard play so far, going heads up here to the flop. We see a board of 5, 6, 7 with two hearts, basically completely missing here, just have a backdoor spade draw. We check it over to our opponent who now goes into the tank. She thinks for a while, and I have to decide now, if she c-bets this flop, could I potentially turn my hand into a bluff, repping a stronger range than hers? What I mean by that is whenever I open under the gun and she three bets me from middle position, she's going to have a lot of hands like jacks, queens, kings, aces, ace king, and ace queen. And on this board, that's not really too good. The best hand she could possibly have here would be aces or a hand like ace king of hearts for a flush draw. However, I could have a lot more hands that beat her. I could have pocket fives, pocket sixes, and pocket sevens, eight nine suited, and maybe even six seven suited for two pair. However, my opponent would never three bet preflop with a hand like sixes or sevens when I open under the gun. She's most likely not three betting a hand like six seven suited when I open under the gun, and probably not three betting eight nine suited. So if she bets this flop, I could turn my hand into a semi bluff trying to put pressure on those one pair of hands of hers i then have a backdoor flush draw or i could continue on any straightening card that makes it look bad for her so i check it over to her thinking if she puts out a bet i may put in a check raise here trying to bluff and represent a stronger range she thinks for a while and ends up checking back the flop, so our plan doesn't work here. We're not able to check raise on this board. We see a deuce of clubs on the turn, which doesn't bring us any extra equity. We could possibly lead out here trying to get her to fold a hand like ace-king. However, she has jacks, queens, or kings and decided to pot control the flop. She's just going to call the turn and then call the river. We'd be lighting money on fire, so I decide to check it over to her. If she puts in a bet, I'll just give up here. She ends up thinking for quite some time again and putting in a bet of $300, so I quickly fold here and move on to the next hand. Picking up a premium here with pocket kings on the button. Under the gun raises to $75. Middle position call 75. We three bet to 350 on the button and unfortunately everybody folds so no action here with pocket kings. Picking up another premium here, raising to $75 with pocket tens from middle position. The cutoff, the button, and the small blind make the call. So we're going four ways, which doesn't normally happen here at 1025. We see a flop of king deuce three with two diamonds. When the action is checked to us, we put out a C bet of $100 here, kind of a small one third pot size bet. We're trying to get value from weaker pairs like pocket eights, pocket nines, pocket sevens that don't want to fold just yet on this board. 
We can also get value from flush draws, some straight draws like ace four or ace five suited. This is most likely a one and done C bet, meaning that if I bet $100 and I get called in one or two spots and I don't improve on the turn with a set, I will probably just give up here and try to just check it down to the river. We get a call from the cutoff and the button, so going here to the turn three ways. The dealer burns and turns the eight of diamonds. We put in the check, and now the action is on the cutoff. This is not the best card for us. We got two calls on the flop, so at least one of these players probably has a flush draw. The cutoff decides to bet 275. The action's now on the button, and I don't think we have too much of a choice here. We got two calls on the flop, and we didn't improve on the turn. I don't think we can call this $275 bet, and we probably shouldn't be turning our hand into a bluff against this player, so we put in the fold here. We've been playing for about two hours now, playing some disciplined poker, folding a lot. These pots are huge, but I really haven't made a hand yet. However, that's about to change. Get ready for this one, guys, because we have pocket queens here. Under the gun raises to $75. Next to act makes it $225. Now we have to decide, should we cold four bet pocket queens or should we just call? Given the fact that it's an under the gun open and an under the gun plus one three bet, I decide to just call here and try to play in position against these guys. Now the action is on the low jack player and he decides 225 is not enough. How about 625? That's right. This guy puts in a cold four bet from an under the gun and an under the gun plus one three bet. This is just such a wild spot here with pocket queens. The low jack player is an older gentleman, not from this country, definitely here for fun and playing for recreation. So whenever he four bets here, he basically has two hands, kings and aces. The last two hours, I've never seen this guy get out of line, and he doesn't look like the kind of player that would be putting in any crazy plays with like ace five suited or ace queen offsuit, so I can assume that his range is super tight here. Under the gun plus one, who three bet initially, calls 625. So now, we only have to call $400 more to potentially win a almost $2,000 pot, plus we still have over $3,000 to play with. So I put in the call for 625. We're going to the flop in a four bet pot here with pocket queens. With over $1,900 in the middle here, we see a flop of king, 10, queen. We end up flopping a set here. I'm so excited that a little urine comes out of me. I have to contain myself. It checks to me. I check to the initial four better who then goes all in. He shoves all in for $3,600. The first player folds. We snap call here. Ask him if he wants to run it once or twice. You want to go once or twice? One time. One time. All in with around $9,000 in the middle with a set. The turn is a three. The river's a king. We make a full house. We show our pocket queens for a boat. Our opponent looks visibly frustrated and shows pocket aces. So we got super lucky against him. He ended up going all in on the flop. We snapped him off. Rivering a full house here. Winning the biggest pot of my life. This is the biggest pot I've ever played and the biggest pot I've ever won. The adrenaline is kicking in. My hands are shaking here. I'm pretty nervous. I'm trying not to knock over my chips as the dealer counts them. Over $9,000 being shipped our way. This is a crazy moment here. Taking a shot at 1025, flopping a set and stacking our opponent. Can't get much better than that. Still riding the high from last hand, we have ace king offsuit in middle position, under the gun raises to $75. We could be three betting, but she's playing less than 10% of her hand, so she's going to have a strong range here. I decide to flat. I also want to play hands with the big blind who just bought in for $10,000 and is an action player. The action player in the big blind does in fact call, so we go to a flop three ways, which comes out 337 rainbow. Our opponents check to us, and I decide to check this one back, and in hindsight, I think I should be betting here just to deny equity from hands like queen jack, jack 10 10, king queen all these hands with six outs or three outs against us the turn is at 10 now bringing a flush draw the big blind leads out for 125 dollars given the fact that he can be doing this with a lot of draws like eight nine flush draws or total air i make the call with my ace high 
the river comes out another 10. So now the board is double paired. The big blind now checks and I'm pretty happy to check this one behind. I'm ahead of all of his missed draws. Unfortunately, he shows pocket nine. So that's a hand that beats us. We end up mucking and losing the small pot here. Coming back from a bathroom break, we look right down at pocket kings. There is a button straddle by the action player. We raise it up to $150. We want to be playing a lot of hands against this player when we have premiums. However, he decides to fold his straddle. So not really getting too much action tonight with pocket kings. I guess it's better to win a small pot than lose a big one. All right, going into our last hand of the night, the opponent that we stacked with pocket queens when he had aces straddles to 50. Now the button raises it up to $125. We just make the call here with ace 10 in the big blind and the straddler fold. So going heads up here to a flop of ace queen nine with one heart. We check it over to the button who puts out a C bet. He bets $100. Obviously can't be folding, shouldn't be raising on this board, so we just make the call. With $500 already in the middle in this pot, we see a turn of four of clubs. We check it over to the button who decides he's going to check this one back, so going to the river, which is an offsuit deuce. I think I should be leading here on the river, trying to get value from a weaker ace, a weaker queen, or maybe even pocket kings, but we check it. He checks back. We wait for him to show. He shows 9-7 of clubs for a 9. We show the ace to win our last pot here at 1025. After about six hours of play, we decide we are done for the night, a little tired. We want to end on a good note and book the win here at our second session ever playing 1025. We end up racking up and heading to the cage, coloring up our chips and heading out for the night. What is up guys? We are out here by the Guitar Hotel wrapping up our session here at 1025, the second time playing 1025 for the vlog. Ran pretty good today as you guys saw. Ended up getting in the game for $7,000. Cashing out for $10,275 for a profit of $3,275 right after our $8,500 win last week. As you guys saw, ran super well today. Kind of slow in the beginning, then started picking up some hands, and then called a three bet with pocket queens, called a four bet with pocket queens, flopped the set, our opponent just jams all in, we snap call, he's got aces, we end up holding up for like an $8,500 pot, the biggest pot I've ever won by far, for sure. So the upswing is amazing. Last month was kind of rough, we were breaking even almost all last month, but this month has just been amazing, upswing, upswing, upswing. However, I know that's not gonna last forever. I'm a little bit fearful of the inevitable downswing. I'm like coming in every day, like is today the day? Is today the day I get set under set, aces versus kings, flush under flush and lose $4,000? Like, I don't wanna think that way, but it's possible, you know? I end up losing 40% of my sessions that I play. So I win 60%, lose 40% according to my poker tracker. So I'm gonna be losing a lot and I have to be ready for that. And same goes for you guys too. If you're on a downswing, my biggest advice would be to play within your bankroll. Don't try to chase your losses at a bigger stake. Let's say you lose $300 at one, two, take a break, take a day off, come back in the next day. Poker is always there for you. Don't go chase your losses at 2 a.m. at 2, 5, buy them for $500 and get stacked and now you can't play for a month, you know? Play within your bankroll and then also just be patient. The, the cards are gonna come around to you. Be patient, play good, don't punt money, don't get on tilt. If you're on tilt, take a break. All that stuff really matters. Like you punt off 200 bucks every month, that's a lot of money at the end of the year, you know? Especially for people trying to move up in stakes. The one thing I definitely wanna do on this vlog is be real with you guys. I wanna show the ups and the downs of poker. Right now I'm on the up, but you know for sure I'm gonna be showing the downs as well when and if that happens for me. So. I'm glad you guys are following along. Have over like 12,000 subscribers now. So this channel is blowing up in the last three months. So thank you to you guys. If you enjoy these videos, make sure to like, hit that subscribe button and also comment down below. Helps the channel grow, helps more people see the videos. I also want you guys to tell me what kind of stakes you guys like to see. If you guys like to see 1025 and you enjoy it, then let me know in the comments. If you wanna see me play one, two or two, five more often, cause it's more of the stakes you play. Let me know that as well. Hope you guys enjoy these videos. I'm excited to go to Texas here, play with Andrew and Brad in their medium game. It's gonna be fun. Until next time, guys, I'll see you.